Hello, friends. Welcome back to Chuck Jones Music. Thanks again for tuning in. Uh, today, I'm going to pick up where I left off about a year ago with uh, SRV, Stevie Ray Vaughan's Scuttle Button. I had a video out uh, last summer of uh, a breakdown with tabs of the, the main lick to Scuttle Button by Stevie Ray. <laughs> That lick right there, and uh, ever since I've been thinking, well, I, I really should break down the solo on that song because that's what everybody wants to learn. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to break this thing down for you, the solo. Uh, <clears throat> I will have a link in the description to the original video that does all the <laughs> that business. Uh, I wanted to, real quick, though, before I dive in, uh, please subscribe, like, um, hit that notification bell, and... Uh, Anything that I do have material-wise for this, I don't think I'm going to do tabs for this. If anybody's really needing tabs, <laughs> let me know in the comment section, and maybe I'll put them together. It's a pretty time-consuming, and I'm thinking it's a lot easier to learn just by looking at what I'm doing on the video. So, But anyway, the tabs for the original um, breakdown video last year are still available on my website, and uh, you just have to go to the subscribe for exclusive content page on chuckjonesmusic.com to download that and any other lesson materials I've had on any of these videos I've been posting. So please feel free to do that. Uh, I did want to give another quick shout out to uh, Backing Track Guitar YouTube channel, which is where I got the uh, backing track to do this original track with. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's dive into the solo sections. So coming out of that second progression, once again, uh, on my performance, I'm hitting this lick here, which Stevie Ray gravitated to in his uh, live performances eventually. But on the record, it actually uh, hits the ID lick again. You end on that upstroke there and let it ring. Getting into the lick here, the first part of the lick is um, just the B and the E string. He's starting on the third fret of the B string with his ring finger uh, and playing the E string open. <laughs> playing both of those strings, he plays five times through. A... And I'm, I'm going down, down, up, down, up. Then he goes through and plays it seven times, the same lick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's like... Then he goes to here to the second fret with his middle finger and uh, does a double stop on the G and the B string, making that A chord here. Then with his index finger, he hammers on the first fret of the G string to make that E chord, playing the G and the B string at the same time. Then he goes up here and hits the E string open, B string open, E string open. So it... Then he stretches or bends the third fret of the B string up to that uh, E note and hits the E string open. Then he pulls off on the B string third fret to open. So it's... Then he does a, a double pull off on the G string here from his ring to his middle to his... to the G open. So it's... Then he plays a D string second fret. Then he goes back up to the G string second fret and pulls it off to open. Same thing on the D string, second fret to open, pull off. Then he hits the A string second fret with his middle finger, then folds it over to get that D string second fret, which is an E note. So it's up. Then he hits that E7 sharp nine. Then coming out of that, he goes into this next part of the lick and let's go to the tape and check that out. All right, so this next part, after coming out of the E7 sharp nine chord again, he hits the B string open. 
Now he's going into the same slide he was doing a, a, to begin with, a ring finger on the third fret of the B string, up to the fifth fret, which is the E note, while hitting the E string simultaneously, playing those two notes in unison. So hits the B string, slides up. He hits this slide about, he slides in about 16 times, and then after every slide he plays that E note, that E string open. And those very last two are a little quicker. Then he comes down here and pulls off Just pulls off the G string second fret to open, then hits the D string second fret with his middle finger, then plays the G string open again, then uh, plays the um, D string second fret with his middle finger again. So hits that E7 sharp nine chord again, and let's see what he does next. So after that, he goes back into a variation of the ID lick. My original video last year, I think he said there was no, I said there was no hybrid picking, but I've since discovered Stevie Ray did indeed use his middle finger for that ID lick on the little E string. Right there. Then going to that five chord, we're gonna to go to this lick here, which is just basically sliding that middle finger from the second to the fourth fret of the G string. Then playing the B string open. Pick that little E string with your middle finger, if that's what works for you. Play the B string open. Slide that ring finger from the third fret of the B string to the fifth fret up. Then hit the E string open again. Then pull off, uh, don't pull off, it's actually played, I thought. E, uh, B string third fret to B string open. Then there's this double pull off again on the G string. Third finger, second finger open. Then middle finger on the D string, second fret. Then he goes back up to the G string uh, with his middle finger and pulls off from second fret to open. Same thing on the D, D string. The thing is like that. So there you go, that's that much of it. And that gets him into this lick where he goes up high on the neck, which we'll get into right now. So he's just doing. So just playing the B string, E string, that's, uh, you know, third fret, B string, 10th fret, E string with your ring and your index finger. Then middle finger and index finger on the B and the E string. Then same thing, slide down two frets. So. Then, he does one of, then he does one of my favorite Stevie Ray things, which is uh, just a, kind of an upstroke and slide that. He's actually doing a double stop at the end there. So it's, <laughs> then double stop. Then that gives him time. Then he slides away up to the 12th fret. Let me see how that goes. So starting up here at the 12th fret, you're just double stopping these um, B and the E string with your index, 12th fret. Then the link, ring finger lays down on the 14th fret. So. One, two, three, four, five. Then index at the 12th fret. B in the G string. Then hit the D string 14th fret with your ring finger there. Back to the double stop. So then he's got this little bend lick. Yeah, he's kind of a... Uh, He's hitting the double, he's bending that up and then hitting the double stop again with the B and the E string on the 12th fret with his index. And then, uh, then kind of hitting that B string 
and then stretching the 15th fret on the B string up, back up to, and then to that E there, and then hitting that double stop of the 12th fret on the B and the E string again. And then, it sounded a little to me like he was actually hitting that five times, or, or four times. One, one, two, three, four. Then the fifth note, you bend that back. So, and it's real quick though, so. So I'm actually, uh, I'll bend that up with a down stroke on the G string, 14th fret. Then I'm going up stroke, down, up, down. So when I'm going to that bend again, it's actually an up stroke that's hitting it. So. And if you're getting all this real quick, guys, you just about have to do it alternate there. Then you're just doing the yoke. Uh, A little uh, hit the e, e string 12th fret, pull off on the uh, B string that right out of the uh, pentatonic scale out there, guys. Then you so that's just E string, then pull off on the B string, hit that G string 14th fret and stretch it, bend it, uh, pull it off to the 12th fret, then. Um, D string, 14, 12, 14. And then, uh... So hitting that muted string lick there with the, uh... That's hitting the, basically the 14th fret with your uh, ring finger. Then uh, 12th fret bar on G and the B string. Then you hit that double strike with the muted, muted strings. Then 14th fret bar G and the B string. Back to the 12th fret bar G and the B string. And then on the D string, 14, 12, 14. Coming out of that lick, I'm just starting a, a fret low, 11th fret, sliding into the 12th fret. My index on the G, uh, D string 12th fret, my middle on the uh, G string 13th fret. Um, then I'm hitting the B, the A string, I'm sorry, at the, on that, that B note on the 14th of the A, 14th fret of the A string. So uh, then do that slide in two more times. Then he takes that devil's triad and goes down here. You go into the four chord here. So uh, now I'm hitting the a string with my ring finger there, that's the bass note. And I'm getting starting this time instead of sliding from the 11th to the 12th, I'm sliding from the 10th to the 11th. Let's get that much. So he goes sliding in from that 10th to the 11th fret and hitting that middle finger in between every time he, he hits it real fast 10 times in a row. So. back into the 12th fret there. Then back into the double stop stuff, hitting double stop the G and the B string on the 14th fret. And when he does that, he's pulling that 12th, that 12th fret of the D string up. Sounds to me like anyway, before he gets back to the 14th on the D string with the ring finger. He's pulling that index finger. Then he goes double stop again. And then you can just fold that ring finger over, you can hit the double stop, and then your ring finger's already on your D string there for that uh, low note. Then index at the 12th fret double stop, so it... And then he does a pull off with his ring finger to the index on the 14th of the 12th fret of the D string. So... So... It, gets us up to this lick. Here you go, yeah, that gets us up to this lick right here, which is just bending that 12th or 14th fret up with your G string up with your ring finger, then hitting both the B and the E string on your 12th fret with your index. Then he does this little, let's see, stretches that up. He might've used the index, I mean the middle there, 
No, I usually use a ring finger, but I, occasionally I would use that middle finger on this leg. But anyway, so. Then Stevie Ray pulls that up. 14th fret off to the 12th fret on that e, little E string. And then goes back and stretches up again on the B string. Then he does a really cool thing. He slides all the way down to that second fret. And let me see what he does with it. There it is. Yeah, okay, so. One of my favorite ones. He he uh, starts down here, slides it all the way, slide down to the second fret of the G string, pull it off, hit the second fret of the D string, back to the G string open, stretch that G string up, second fret up with your middle finger, then to pull it off again. That's what he did. Stretch it, pull it off twice. Then pull the D string off once from the second fret to open it. And then you uh, hit that B string, uh, the A string, second fret with your middle finger. Then fold it over onto that D string, second fret. So and then go into that E7 sharp nine chord again. So basically, you've got. A Then he goes back up here to the the same uh, double stops we were doing at the beginning of this thing on the first third of this kind of solo. Instead of hitting it four times, like the first time he went up here, he grabbed it, he went uh, at the beginning of the solo, if you recall. This time, let's hear what he does. Uh, go so it's uh <laughs> yeah it's like a coming out of that he lifts that ring again then gives him time to slide up here twice on all three of these uh thirds that we had earlier huh? so what he's doing he's kind of bending this three playing a major third, but he's starting on the minor third there, a very bluesy thing to do, bending up to that third note. So he starts with his index, so it's, he winds up here with this lick and starts bending up to that third. Leaves it there, kind of has that old train sound. Then he, while leaving those two fingers in place, he's hitting the... He's reaching up with his pinky, then his ring finger. Pinky to the little string, little E string, 10th fret, then little E string, 9th fret. And he hits those twice again, I, I think. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, he knows he hits a B string twice in a row at one point there. Right there. Just rocking back and forth from that B to that E string. Then he slabs off of that. Then he comes into this A, um, half of an A bar chord at the, at the fifth fret. It's just kind of, that's the four chords. We're doing that section. And that's the lick. He just slides in. Let's hear it. We're almost to the end here, guys. So then he's just got to slide in from the fourth fret to the sixth fret with your index finger, set you up for that half a bar chord. And then your index is laying down on your B string and your E string, fifth fret. So he's probably, I'm sure, pretty sure Stevie Ray bent this up, this B string up with his middle finger. I mean, I'm sorry, his ring finger most likely, but I usually find it easier to do with my pinky. 
So that's a lick right there. Slide it in, hit that, then bend that up. Uh, eighth fret B string up to the, to the fifth fret of the E string. And then instead of pulling off what you would for the uh, Dorian mode there, he's hitting that blue note there. In the key of E anyway, that's that flat five note. So it's just walking down on that uh, uh, pentatonic scale. Eighth fret, fifth fret on the B string, then back to the fifth fret of that E string, back to the eighth fret of the B string. So then he goes down to. Just slide up on the G string, hit the B string, E string open, G string second fret to open, then hits the D string, back to the G string, then D string. Pulls it off a second fret to open. Then hits a low E string. Then he's back into the original ID lick at the end of the, what he does at, at the end of every progression on the first original video that I put out last year. Um, has all that on there. So and then he goes through the head one more time on the original record after he does that. One other thing I would add here was would be that on that last lick. If I, whenever I play this thing out anymore, I, I like to do the lick that I, he, he eventually gravitated to in his live performances himself. Instead of hitting that 7-9 chord, that B7-9 altered 7th chord, that, actually 7 sharp 9, I'm sorry. And then hitting the... And then hitting that same ID lick he starts with, he at the end of it, occasionally, a couple of times in each performance, he'll go... He just... I, I like to do the uh, B string. It's just a B7 chord, guys, and just playing. I'm skipping the D and the B string, and I'm playing the A string, G string, A string, E string, G string, A string, then to the A open. So it's A string, G string, A string, E string, G string, A string, then A string open. And then he does this other lick that he hits a few times. There you go. And then he goes into the head one more time. Goes all the way through, and the end this time he, at least from the videos I've seen, that's what it looks like he's doing. Of course, you could do a bar the whole thing, which is what I did for years. But I kind of like what he does. And then, of course, I'm muting that A string. Just like just like it's an E chord. It's basically the same thing I'm playing down here, except I'm actually not hitting the E string, the D string on the second fret. I'm muting it and having the B string. Uh, B note, A string, second fret. There you go, folks. That's the breakdown of the solo sections on Scuttle Button by Stevie Ray Vaughan. Once again, please um, like and subscribe. Um, Hit that notification bell. And uh, any, like I say, visit my website, chucksjonesmusic.com. Go to the subscribe for exclusive content page for all kinds of free materials on there for um, lessons I've done in the past. And um, that's about it for now, folks. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. I appreciate it. I look forward to the next one. It's all right.